Welcome back. Today, we're gonna start working on the intercooler setup for the turbo K swap. Let's get to it. This is the intercooler in question. It's a three inch outlet. I'll post the other dimensions somewhere here. Uh, I got it from Summit Racing. It's like just under 200 bucks. It is a stout, heavy piece. I mean, definitely heavier than I expected it to be, but I wanted three inch inlet and outlet because I'm working with a three inch here and I figured why not match the whole thing? I might've shot myself in the foot. We're gonna figure out when we get to the piping setup here, but uh, yeah, so we're gonna work on hanging this today, which is nice because it comes with these threaded bosses on it. So we're gonna take the bumper off Make some mounts, hang it, and depending how much time this all takes, I might play with this guy and all of that aluminum piping you see over there and start working on making pipe setups for this to run to both the turbo and the throttle body. So, got some cool parts for that. That's going to require uh, cutting off the flanges here. We're using aluminum V-bands because V-band the world. It's 2021. If you're not running V-bands on like everything in 2021, what are you doing? So actually, let me show you these because they're pretty cool. So similar to regular V-bands that you'd see on like a downpipe or something like that, these work the same way, except these have a silicone coupler in the middle, so you can't use these for high heat. But for something like this, it'll be great because we're gonna swap out this end here and I'll be able to V-band this thing. And I haven't had a boosted car besides my uh, six, seven power stroke. So I haven't dealt with it, but I've had friends with turbo cars. I've been driving turbo cars with other people when the intercooler pipes blow off. <laughs> and when they blow off in the engine bay, it's kind of okay. You can go in there and tighten it up. When they blow off behind the bumper and you're on the side of the road, it's a pain to crawl under there. So this is like, to me, the end all be all answer that gets me away from having that issue. And they're fly. Who doesn't love V-bands? So I've got four. Not sure how many I'm going to need. I'm thinking one on either side of the intercooler and then maybe one halfway through each system so I can couple and decouple it and take it out and into the take it out and put it into the car easily. Uh, but we'll see when we get there. It's going to depend on the fitment. These are going to be tight. So uh, yeah, we're going to use some YouTube magic and this bumper is going to be gone. So yeah, we'll be right back. All right, the front bumper is off. As you can see, it's sitting over there. We're going to have to use it uh, just to make sure that the intercooler is at the right height vertically. I threw the radiator in, but it's 100% just kind of lean sitting on the two posts down there. And uh, the bolts aren't even in it because they're sitting down here. So this is just here for mock-up purposes. You can see the intercooler down there. Uh, what I'm going to want to make sure I do is put the bumper on and that I have as much of the opening of the bumper lined up with as much of the intercooler as possible. So that's just a vertical thing. Uh, left to right is gonna be pretty easy. I'm just gonna center it. Uh, and then once that's fixed up, I'm thinking I'm gonna go from this hole to this boss, this hole to the opposite boss over there. And then down here, I'm not entirely sure. There's a thread hole here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need it, but I could come over or I could come down to these bottom bars. Uh, I'm just going to start with the top ones and see how it feels, and then I'll kind of work my way through it. I've got some aluminum strip that I'm going to bend up, drill holes in, that should hold everything. So, uh, yeah, let's kind of get to work. <laughs> So the perfect measurement that I found is one Harbor Freight stool all the way up, a 2x4, and then the intercooler sits on top. So you can see there's plenty of room in here between the top and the top of this bar, which doesn't really matter. I just can't come up much farther because of the hood latch and there's some like the horn wire and whatnot. It's all running right there. So when I put the bumper up, the openings sits like right around here. So I have all of this real estate of open intercooler, open intercooler space. Not to mention that the opening in the grill or the mouth of the bumper 
is not flush with the intercooler so there's room for air to kind of open up uh i'm not running crazy boost this intercooler is overkill so it's gonna be more than okay uh, i just want to make sure i get it at the right height my other concern was the bottom of the bumper is like right around here so i wanted some sort of angle so if like if i'm going over a speed bump because this is before the wheels i didn't want to scrape the bottom of the intercooler on anything so this is kind of the best scenario that i found that gives me ground clearance top clearance plenty of room to build intercooler pipes that come around here so yeah, let's um, start fabbing up some little angle bracket things to hold these in place. Alright, intercooler is mounted up. There's the one bracket here that you saw me make. I just made a duplicate one over here. The brackets are identical, so I know that this is centered, which is awesome. But the problem I have now is it's held from this direction, but nothing's keeping it from swaying. So I've got some rock in it, and I don't want that because you can hear it right here. I don't want that while I'm driving. So what I'm going to do is probably use these holes right here in the crossbar. Drill them out, put rib nuts in them, and then run a brace from here to here, and that should square everything up really nice, uh, hopefully. But yeah, it's hanging on its own there. Looks pretty sweet. So let's uh, let's quickly. It's just gonna be a simple. I'll show you guys afterwards. Simple straight shot, and uh, that should hold everything in place. There you have it. So they tap into the same bolt. And they are the same length so the radiator or the intercooler is square behind the core support it's not rock solid which i did some thinking about it and it's probably better that it's not so you can see if i actually put some you know force on it i can move it but not a lot uh, this is all set i had to relocate the horn so typically the horn goes right here uh, i took the bracket let's see if we can get you on the back side I took this bracket and I bent it, put a rivnut right here, drilled a second hole, and then just blasted the same bolt right through it. So this all gets covered by a Track Dog Racing finish plate. So you won't see this, it's kind of ugly. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's the mounted intercooler right there. So that's awesome. It's nice and level, everything's great. So what we're gonna do now uh, is take this off and run the ends through the bandsaw so that we can fit these pipe fittings on it and hopefully get those tacked up. So let's see how this goes. Hopefully I don't blow a hole through my brand new intercooler. So I didn't account for how much this whole setup vibrates. So you guys took a tumble off of this, but GoPro's fine. That's why it's in a big metal case. So we did that so that we can do this. And now we'll weld this guy onto here once we clean up this paint and then the other side of the intercooler pipe will have that guy on it so mating these up will just be nice boom hit a clamp on it done and then this side same thing slap it on there and then it'll run all the way up to the car should be super super clean i am so pumped for these i like i'm like a kid in the candy store when it comes to v-bands so uh yeah these are gonna be dope you can probably hear the welder running behind me. Um, I've cleaned up this face here and I gave myself about half to three quarters of an inch. This is the V-band, you can tell it's kind of loose right now. So I'm gonna go and tack it in three spots first and then try and weld the whole thing up. So uh, we'll see how this whole thing goes. Uh, I did practice some lap welds down here before, like five minutes ago, so hopefully it makes some sense to me as I'm going around. Worst case is always James, but I wanna, I need to figure this stuff out on my own. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot. Uh, welder's all set up for AC, cup set up, 330 second filler, number five cup. Uh, I might go to a six, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna give this a shot. I'm gonna switch that out real quick and we'll see how this turns out.
So you saw really half of the first one that I did. Uh, and admittedly, I've never welded anything this thick out of aluminum. I've only done these witness coupons, which are 065. And so you can see I did some laps. This one was really bad. But uh, I did some lap welds, bent them to make sure they were strong. Um, and I use like 80 to 90 amps when I do that. And so I turned this up to like 110, thinking that was going to be enough. And I had to sit on the intercooler for like probably five seconds to get it to heat up and get a puddle to form. So once I figured it out, I cranked it up to 130, which still might not be ideal, but it worked. Uh, the first one that you saw is definitely not as good as the second one, which is still not great, but it's definitely not bad. So uh, in all transparency, here's the first one. So not great, but it will definitely hold. And then I'm not gonna touch this one because I just finished it. But this one is definitely better. I have some issues with like consistency and feeding it and moving my arms at the same time. It's just a practice thing. Uh, I literally got this welder today, Saturday. I got it on Monday and Wednesday was the first time I ever welded any aluminum. Uh, so I'm pretty proud of myself. Uh, yeah, like I, I'm going to hype myself up here. Uh, the stainless stuff has been coming along pretty well. Let me find the sweet piece I did the other day. Yeah. So this is a butt joint. These are two pieces. And like, look at that weave. So uh, I did, I wanted to practice on pie cut pieces. So I did tack up the downpipe top section of my turbo setup, but I will weld this with you guys on camera. And the fit up looks good enough that I might be able to do uh, autogenous or like no filler weld, which would be clean. And that's what that was. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to throw some paint on this. I'm going to tape off probably, you know, quarter inch off the ends, throw tape on it, hit it with some black, hit the brackets, uh, and then I'll throw this on the car and we'll see where we get from there. I don't think I'm going to build all of the intercooler stuff in this episode, like the pipes and everything. I might get started, but it's going to be a process. So yeah, actually, I think I'm going to save that for another episode. This took longer than I expected in the first place. Uh, I thought I'd be done with this by morning, and it's mid-afternoon. So uh, I'm going to throw this on, show you guys what it looks like, and that'll be the end of this episode. And then the next episode will be me banging my head against the wall, making like 400 pie cuts to wrap this intercooler stuff up. So yeah, let's get some paint on it, and let's get it thrown in the engine bay. It's all painted up. It took like two hours to dry, so I played around with the welder a little more. And I'd say I got a little bit better. Look at those beads. I'm pretty pumped. I've always wanted to learn how to weld and like the fact that I can now do it in my own garage is awesome. So to end this episode out, I'm gonna install this intercooler, which came out pretty sweet. So I taped off the ends, looks pretty clean. All the bracketry is painted up top and we're gonna slam it in the car and it'll realistically be the probably the last time it comes in or out of the car. So we'll bolt it up there permanently. And then I'm gonna use those pipes I cut as the start to the rest of the intercooler piping, which you'll see in the next episode. Uh, and I'm gonna start working my way around to the turbo. So we'll, we'll put this in, we'll put the radiator in and just kind of bolt it in place. And then I'm gonna to have to work around those things. It's gonna be really tight with the three inch, but uh, we'll see. See what we gotta to do to make it all fit. I think I, I think I have a path. I just, we'll see. So, all right, let's slam this guy in. There you have it. Fully installed, there's a gap and there's plenty of space between the V-band flange and this guy for a clamp, so. Uh, I have no concerns about that. This looks awesome. I am so pumped to finally have a car that's gonna have a turbo. Like I said earlier, I have, besides I had a 6.7 power stroke, F250, big boy diesel. 
Besides that, I've never had a turbo car. Uh, it's just always been one of those things that seemed very out of reach for me. Uh, I'm sure I could have done it years ago, but I always wanted to like, I didn't want to kind of half-ass it. So uh, this time, not cutting corners at all. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm so excited, I'm so pumped. This is like a, you know, playing with the turbo was huge for me. That was already a big step. Now like, yeah, cool, you had a turbo in your hands, but now make it work. So now is the point of like, I'm gonna start filling this engine bay up with stuff that is relevant to the turbo and it's gonna be so sick when it's done and it's gonna make the best noises and it's gonna sound so sweet. And I'm so hyped, so hyped. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be a wrap for this episode. Definitely hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Please smash that subscribe button, uh, helps us out a ton. Uh, or even if you didn't like the video, dislike it. Let me know if you thought my welds were garbage or what, um, but leave a comment. I love to read them, good or bad. So yeah, we will see you next week when we hopefully start fabbing up some intercooler piping. Thank you.